Industry insiders call the vehicles that couriers use soft skins. The thin metal of cars and vans that give no protection at all against bullets. The men and women who provide courier services increasingly face very harrowing working days. Tonight's poll asks whether you're getting more goods delivered since the pandemic hit. So head over to our Facebook and Twitter pages to vote. Living in lockdown has popularized online shopping around the globe, with an estimated 1.8 billion active e-commerce shoppers, packages are delivered day in and day out across South Africa. But with convenience comes new threats. Gun-wielding criminals are targeting courier vans transporting high-value goods, and these hits are carried out with military precision. With multiple hits across the country every day, the 20 billion rand local courier industry is under siege. They are under attack. It's like a war zone for them out there. Gary Marshall is from SAPA, the South African Express Parcel Association, representing the courier industry. He says some of his members experience up to three hits a day. We have thousands of vehicles on the road in Johannesburg alone. So we're everywhere and we're highly visible. We don't carry toothpaste as a rule. So people understand that, you know, there's, there's commodity of value in there. Millions of rands worth of cargo is transported in and around major cities daily from electronics to mobile devices. Criminal syndicates have set their sights on these loads that are quick to move on the black markets. It's getting more aggressive. These guys are heavily armed. They've got rifles, high performance vehicles. They're well equipped to do the job. This man is an investigator who works within a courier operation. He says normal day to day courier vans are sitting ducks. It's soft skin vehicles, it's, it's the easy target. If a guy shoots at you in a vehicle like that, what are you going to do? Nothing. We're going to get shot and that's that. When these robbers go in guns blazing, it's usually the courier driver who is threatened first. These criminal gangs are on a mission. Desperate to get the loot, they're ruthless and they're violent. When they took out guns, I was fearing for my life that maybe they're going to kill us. Donald Piri has been a driver for over 20 years. He was held up in July 2020 when he was transporting a shipment of mobile phones. This is exclusive footage from the truck on the day of the robbery. We stopped by the robots. After two minutes, all of a sudden, I saw guys carrying guns. It was almost about 15 guys. Watch as the gang stands around while a generator-powered industrial grinder is brought out and used to cut the locks on the back of the truck. Once open, they offloaded as many boxes as they can in just over three minutes before making their getaway. Risk manager Martin Taylor works for a company specializing in international freight forwarding and warehousing of predominantly high-value goods. While some of the stock was recovered in the July robbery, Taylor says it was clearly an orchestrated hit. In this industry, you're fighting syndicates at the end of the day. Um, they fighting us as much as we sit and plan, they sit and plan. Criminals move between different crime spheres from hijacking to cash and transit robberies and more recently to courier hits. These are professionals, according to Taylor. The groups are up to 25 for a single courier vehicle. How do you fight that? You know, an armed gang of 25 to take out a single courier vehicle, driver, and uh, maybe one or two escort vehicles, you know. So the groups are just getting stronger. It's not opportunistic, you know. In the residential areas, you'll have your opportunistic guys that grab a vehicle quickly in front of a residential gate. But most of this is syndicate driven. No one thinks of the courier industry as a security operation. But in the current economic climate with constant criminal threats, businesses have had to adapt in order to protect their cargoes. Robbie Roberts is the head of security for a law enforcement company providing armed escorts in armored vehicles to the courier industry. These guys doesn't play. They come with high caliber firearms like your AK, 47s for sure, and also your 223 uh, rifles. And they also come with uh, high powered vehicles. This is footage from a recent attack on a delivery truck escorted by Roberts' team. Watch as the robbers ram the vehicle on the side and open fire. 42 shots pelted the driver's side of the escort vehicle. They've got no sense for life because they go for the kill. 
You can see it's not guys that you get from the street. The way they approach the cargo, it's totally organized. And also the way that they attack the escorts. You can see these guys take cover. They don't just run around. Here, in a second clip captured from the camera on the back of the courier van, you can see how brazen armed robbers relentlessly open fire on the escort vehicle accompanying the courier van. The gunmen continue shooting despite being surrounded by civilian cars at a busy intersection during this robbery in broad daylight. A few days later, another courier company was hit at the entrance gate of MTN head office in Johannesburg. Watch a white double cab and silver BMW race to the boom gate. The robbers emerge and open fire. The thieves shot at the escort car, wounding three of the guards, while the rest of the gang loaded boxes of handsets into the double cab. For drivers like Piri, attacks like this are a daily reality. It's dangerous because you don't know when it's going to happen. Yeah, I see this thing is now is getting worse every day. So, you know, we do the hijacking awareness training and as much as training and trauma counseling that you can do, you know, it, it still hits home, you know. It's not just about the driver, it's about the crew that goes with him at the end of the day, you know, and that they safely return home. Courier companies are incurring major costs incorporating a range of security mechanisms and controls to protect their facilities, cargo and employees. While Taylor's company has invested heavily in keeping their cargo secure, it doesn't come cheap. I guess with that security cost is always a cost that you can't recover. So it's not just the initial capital layout, but it's also the monthly cost. It ultimately affects the logistics cost and then the consumer cost. Some companies are spending as much as five million rand a month on security, explains Marshall. They're suffering enormous financial losses because all of them are carrying these goods and take responsibility for it. So uh, their losses run into a lot of money. Big money that the criminals are pocketing. Investigations have revealed that many of the devices are destined for export. And they can sell it for half the price and it's clean cash. They just do what they need to do, get rid of it, take it out of the country and sell it and make money. And you'll find that these devices uh, land up cross border the very same day. Botswana border post, Mozambican border post, it goes over the border within four hours. It's already cross border, undocumented obviously. Globally, the massive demand for smartphones has given rise to a booming black market for stolen mobile devices. International syndicates trade sought after electronics under the radar. Wallo Good Luck is from the GSMA, an international mobile interest group that operates a global IMEI blacklisting service. Cell phone trafficking, I think, is organized big time movement of devices across borders. So you find that, you know, if phones are being stolen in one country and they're unable to activate those phones in that market, very often the criminal gangs are taking them across borders and going to markets where you may have perhaps less stringent onboarding uh, operational requirements for new phones on the network. Internationally, mobile device crime trends have moved from opportunistic petty thieving to organize syndicates carrying out robberies? Um, across the world, I think there's a general trend that mobile phone theft is moving from the sort of personal smashed and grab kind of crime and moving more to the more sophisticated uh, phone trafficking, uh, boggling of warehouses and hijacking in transit of large consignments of mobile phones. So I think that that is a global trend. Um, you know, and it's driven by just the sheer attractiveness of mobile handsets and mobile devices. The biggest challenge in South Africa is that courier companies are tackling this crime threat in silos and are not sharing security intelligence, according to this investigator. Could the courier companies themselves be to blame for this? They're scared of actually sharing information and, and the guys, if it's close to your body, you don't share with another company. So yeah, it's a problem because if I get hit and you get hit and you don't tell me about it, and the same folks go hit somebody else, we knew about it, so afterwards we just go, oh yeah, we knew about that, guys. But Marshall is confident that there is a shift taking place and talks of joint efforts within the industry and police to combat this crime scourge. We're doing everything possible we can. The amount of money that we're spending, the amount of sleepless nights that go into this. 
need to get involved. We need more intelligence, we need more cooperation, and that's the only way we're going to tackle it. But it is a South African problem. But as long as there is a global demand for cheap mobile devices, criminals will keep coming for the stock and security will have to be stepped up. There's not one holistic solution that all that can fight this. As they evolve, we have to evolve. If nothing is done to address this problem, what will happen? The, the way these guys are shooting, they don't care. They've got no sinful life for people around them. We're going to end up in a proper bloodbath. Thank you for watching our stories here online. And please subscribe below to become part of our YouTube community and be notified when we upload our latest content.